Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is about talk article about tuberculosis in pregnancy, November 2022. The prevalence of active tuberculosis among pregnant women ranges from 0.06% to 0.25% in the low prevalence countries and in the high prevalence countries, the rates are between 0.07% to 0.5%. The mycobacterium tuberculosis discovered by Robert Koch in 1882 is the causative organism of tuberculosis. How is tuberculosis transmitted? Primarily, it is an airborne infection, but infection can also occur through ingestion of unpasteurized milk or direct implantation through abrasion in the skin or conjunctiva. The macrophages ingest and surround the bacilli, forming a barrier together described as granuloma. The pulmonary disease is the most common form of clinical tuberculosis. The outcomes for primary infection with tuberculosis include first of all latent TB. The latent TB is an asymptomatic and non-infectious state. The next one is that of the primary tuberculosis in which disease occurs within the two years of infection and the last one is secondary tuberculosis. 25% of active tuberculosis can present as extrapulmonary tuberculosis. The most common extrapulmonary disease in pregnancy in the UK occurs in the cervical lymph nodes, accounting for approximately 31% cases of tuberculosis. Among the clinical presentations of tuberculosis, except for the fever, symptoms are like that of tuberculosis in the non-pregnant women, including weight loss, night sweats, chills, loss of appetite, tiredness, and weakness, which may be harder to label as pathological in pregnancy. As lungs are commonly infected, chronic cough of more than three weeks, the chest pain or hemoptysis may be the presenting features. The primary physician may have attempted to treat the infection with antibiotics prior to the presentation of a patient. Though pulmonary tuberculosis is the commonest, Extrapulmonary tuberculosis is more common in immunocompromised and HIV-positive women. Now, if we suspect pulmonary tuberculosis, we look for the symptoms of tuberculosis. If symptoms are there, she may have active tuberculosis. If symptoms are absent, she is in latent phase of tuberculosis. In latent tuberculosis, we do tuberculin test and IGRA test. If those are positive, we suspect active tuberculosis and if negative, we give treatment for the latent tuberculosis. So in case of the active tuberculosis, we do chest x-ray. The sputum samples are done three times. Microscopy and cultures are performed and a drug susceptibility testing is done. After that, we involve the multidisciplinary TB team and anti-tuberculous treatment is initiated. The WHO suggests a four symptom screening, including fever, night sweats, cough, and weight loss. The investigations for tuberculosis can be broadly classified as, first of all, the screening tests, which include TB skin test, interferon gamma release assay, that is IGRA, and the confirmatory tests, which include microscopy, culture, and sensitivity. The additional tests include imaging studies. The tuberculin test involves administration of purified protein derivatives at a conventional dose intradermally and its delayed hypersensitivity reactions in terms of induration is measured between 48 to 72 hours. Pregnancy doesn't alter the outcome of the result as the pro pro uh, purified protein derivatives is not infectious and it can be safely administered to both mothers and the babies. There are two types of tuberculin test. First is Tyne and the second one is Montux test. The Tyne test is rarely used. Montux test is most frequently performed. The interferon gamma release assay or IGRA detects the cytokine called interferon gamma, which is produced following stimulation of tuberculous specific antigens. Although IGRA is not validated for use in pregnant women. It is routinely performed in pregnancy and like the C. tuberculin skin test, IGRA doesn't differentiate the latent from active infection. The most commonly used technique globally for identifying AFPs is the Z-staining of 
sputum and other secretions. The histology of an affected organ may show a granulomatous reaction with epithelial cell granuloma with a Langerhorn giant cells and caseous necrosis in the center. The algae medium is traditionally used for culture and sensitivity of mycobacterium tuberculosis. Culture may take 4 to 8 weeks and the drug sensitivity results may take a further 6 to 8 weeks. MRI should be considered before CT scan for investigation of pulmonary or extra pulmonary tuberculosis in the pregnant woman. In pregnancy, the immunological changes increase susceptibility to tuberculosis meaning the women of reproductive age are at increased risk of pulmonary tuberculosis or reactivation of tuberculosis. The postpartum period is observed to have an increased risk of reactivation of the disease and the susceptibility of women to tu tuberculosis during this period is higher than in the non-pregnant women with a similar demographics. Now, the pregnancy is definitely affected by tuberculosis and the maternal and neonatal outcomes depend on the stage of the disease process, the gestational age at the diagnosis, the treatment received, the presence of extra pulmonary spread, the co-infection of HIV and presence of other comorbidities such as diabetes and other autoimmune disease. The presence of tuberculosis during pregnancy and postpartum increases the risk of adverse outcome. The maternal complications of tuberculosis include first of all anemia and Chopra et al. observed that the risk of anemia was 41% in the pregnant woman with tuberculosis, both pulmonary and extrapulmonary, compared with 23% in the woman with no active tuberculosis. The other complication is hypertension in pregnancy, the gestational diabetes. There were two maternal deaths accounting for 4% of all the cases. The fetal complications included the risk of prematurity, which was 32%, and for the risk of small for gestational age, that was 22%. The prevalence of antenatal oligohydramnios was also high in the women with active tuberculosis. Yadeo et al. found increased incidence of the preterm premature rupture of membranes, the cholestasis in pregnancy, low Abgar score of less than 8, and the significant differences in the neonatal respiratory distress syndrome, that is 13.3% versus 1.67% in the pregnant woman with extrapulmonary tuberculosis. Now, regarding HIV tuberculosis co infection, the different studies found that HIV TB co infection can lead to increased rates of anemia, eclampsia, placenta accreta, drug abuse, and depression. Now, the treatment of a pregnant woman with tuberculosis is planned, um, involving specialists from multidisciplinary TB team that could involve the case workers, the health visitors, obstetrician with a specialist interest in maternal medicine, the infectious disease specialist, the medical microbiology um, team, and the TB and lead physicians, the nurse, the pharmacist, etc. When we talk about active tuberculosis, according to the NICE, the treatment of TB in the pregnancy is like that in the non-pregnant woman. The duration and the dose of medications are not altered because of pregnancy or according to the gestation. Once the diagnosis of tuberculosis is established, the treatment of tuberculosis not involving the central nervous system should include the isoniazid, rifampicin, pyrazinamide and ethambutol for about two months, which is the initial phase followed by isoniazid and rifampicin for the following four months, which is the continuation phase. If central nervous system is involved, the recommended treatment duration is for 12 months involving isoniazid, rifampicin, pyrazinamide and ethambutol for two months and then isoniazid and rifampicin for 10 months. The pyridoxine of 10 mg per day is given along with isoniazid during both the initiation and continuation phase as there is an increased requirement during pregnancy and this mitigates the risk of neurotoxicity to the mother and the neonate. So according to the TOG article, isoniazid daily dose is 4 to 6 mg per kg and the side effects include liver injury, peripheral neuropathy, aneuritis, the seizures, 
severe cutaneous adverse reaction, psychosis, lupus-like syndrome, vasculitis, and pancreatitis. Next is rifampicin, which is given in the daily dose of 8 to 12 mg per kg. And the side effects include nausea, vomiting, liver injury, acute kidney injury, severe cutaneous adverse reaction or scars, discoloration of saliva, urine and sweats, anemia, thrombocytopenia, pyrexia and adrenal insufficiency. The pyrazinamide is given in the daily dose of 20 to 30 mg per kg. The side effects include arthralgia, dysuria, gout, liver injury, photosensitivity, sideroblastic anemia and splenomegaly. Ethambutol daily dose is 15 to 25 mg per kg. The side effects include gout, neuritis, kidney injury, alveolitis, flatulence, photosensitivity, lichenite eruption and the severe cutaneous adverse reaction. If symptoms persist, worsen or the investigation prove otherwise, they should be considered for the drug susceptibility and the dosing of the regime should be tailored depending on the individual circumstances. For the pregnant woman with central nervous system involvement, adjuvant corticosteroids with either dexamethasone or prednisolone is recommended. All first-line anti-tuberculous medications are classified as Category C by FDA and are considered safe to administer in pregnancy with no proven teratogenic effects. The WHO, the British Thoracic Society and Centre for the Disease Control and Prevention, consider the first-line anti-TB drugs safe to be taken during pregnancy except for streptomycin, which is associated with 15% risk of neonatal irreversible deafness and it is not normally used in the pregnancy. The majority of the women taking first-line anti-TB drugs may not experience any adverse side effects. However, hepatotoxicity associated with isoniazid is a concern. Now, following drug susceptibility testing, if mycobacterium tuberculosis is resistant to one of the first-line anti-tuberculous drugs except rifampicin, this should be considered as a drug-resistant TB. So, in drug-resistant TB, the duration of initial treatment phase remains two months with the combination of three antituberculous medications, but the continuation phase varies between four to seven months with the two antituberculous medications, depending upon the drug sensitivity to mycobacterium. If mycobacterium is resistant to either rifampicin or to both rifampicin and isoniazid, it should be considered as multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. In case of the latent tuberculosis, delaying treatment to the second trimester is not recommended and commencing treatment in the first trimester has been shown to reduce the risk of maternal complications and almost prevent miscarriage, preterm labor and perinatal mortality and morbidity. The treatment for the latent tuberculous infection is isoniazid for six months or a combination of both isoniazid and rifampicin for three months based on the individual clinical circumstances. Supplemental pyridoxine should be given when the treatment with isoniazid is initiated. The risk of hepatotoxicity necessitates careful monitoring of the liver function test before initiation of the treatment for the pregnant woman with a known a non-severe liver disease or abnormal LFTs. The WHO recommends initiation of isoniazid preventive therapy along with antiretroviral treatment in HIV positive pregnant women means not diagnosed as latent TB due to the adverse risk of TB during pregnancy. The perinatal tuberculosis include tuberculosis acquired congenitally and postnatally. The neonatal tuberculosis is more likely to occur in the postnatal period and is usually acquired in the immediate postpartum period when the neonate comes in close contact with an open active sputum positive case of tuberculosis. In UK, the BCG vaccine is recommended for neonates whose parents or grandparents were born in a country where the annual incidence of tuberculosis is 40 per 100,000 or greater or if a newborn baby is living in an area of UK where the annual incidence of the tuberculosis is 40 per 100,000 or greater. 
So thank you so much. I explained all the salient features of tuberculosis in pregnancy from the talk article. Subscribe on Obstain Gaini. Allah Hafiz.